Let's welcome back to the show. Look who's here from House Judiciary's Congressman Darrell Issa. Congressman, a pleasure having you on. It's good to see you again. Well, thank you for having me on, and, and, and thanks for continuing to cover this uh, evolving scandal. You know, you, so look what's going on here. You and your fellow GOP members of House Judiciary, you fired off a letter Friday to former FBI agent Tim Tebow. Can you tell, tell us what's going on here? Well, as you know, uh, Tim Tebow has been part of a cover-up. He knew that the Hunter Biden laptop was real. He knew that lies were being told. And then, in fact, uh, Russian collusion was even being blamed when, in fact, he knew what he had was an authentic and damning uh, evidence in his possession. Now he's retired, which take him, takes him out of the reach of the inspector general and others, but not out of the re reaches of Congress if we're given subpoena authority. And so we wanted to make sure that he preserved uh, any documents, that they didn't get shredded uh, like Hillary's blackberries, <laughs> and uh, that uh, we would be in a position to actually have a discussion about uh, not just what he knew and when he knew it, but why he was part of the cover-up and what he thought to accomplish. So, Congressman, that's the question, because more and more we're seeing the work of House GOP members for example, ranking Republican James Comer and yourself, you know, James Comer of House Oversight revealing that they found PowerPoint presentations on Hunter Biden's laptop that talked about the Biden family selling U.S. natural gas reserves to Hunter Biden's business partner, CEFC. That's being called the Enron of Communist China to sell them out of five U.S. states, Pennsylvania, Louisiana, Wyoming, Texas and Oklahoma. So why was this guy blocking any probe into what Hunter was doing? Well, you know, ostensibly, they'll tell you that uh, the reason uh, that they're not cooperating is that they're investigating. Uh, but the, the, the trail has gone very cold on any real investigation uh, or any follow up. And as we see the IRS and other organizations within the control of President Biden basically whitewashing uh, Hunter Biden, we know that a lot of the legitimate things that can be done will be out of our reach by January 3rd of next year. But, you know, going after those who are part of the cover-up, always appropriate to do, uh, especially when you're considering the Department of Justice uh, clear bias toward not prosecuting liberals and the, this administration and going after, on a very selective basis, conservatives, pro-life, and Trump supporters. And you know the other thing, too, Congressman, this is striking, that you know, reports that Tim Tebow had been assigned as the FBI's point man to manage Hunter Biden's business, business partner, Tony Bobolinsky, whose his revelations about the first son also went ignored by the FBI. I mean, that Tebow helped bury information about Bobolinsky, who said that China energy deal that we just talked about with the U.S. NAC gas reserves going to CEFC, Tony Bobolinsky was the one who said... 10% was set aside for the big guy, Joe Biden. And James Comer is finding even more, and House GOP on oversight, finding more inf and more information about Joe Biden knowing all about this all along. Oh, absolutely. And Tony Bobolinsky uh, testified before, or gave, you know, testimony to the FBI, at least five hours that we know of. Uh, and all of that has simply gone into a black hole. So, you know, these are the questions we need to ask. Eventually, we want to see those five hours, see what he said. We know what he would say to us today, but it's important to see what he said then and why the FBI thought it was possible to ignore it. And, you know, Liz, when I say FBI, it's important to understand the FBI is part of the Department of Justice. A, a, a U.S. attorney in every case is part of the cover-up. Got it. Congressman Issa, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure having you on.